we can help on the course. Let's all stand. We'll help them sing it on the course. I want you to listen. Now let me just tell you about God here real quick. And I don't have a long message. I knew we had uh, extra stuff tonight. And this morning only preached 31 minutes. I'll probably beat that tonight unless it just gets crazy. And it might. I'm feeling pretty good. I'll be honest with you. But uh, the message tonight is about how great is our God. And I, I left out even an animal tonight. I'm sorry children because again I knew what all was coming. So we've been doing salvation and the part tonight that we're going to do is in the, the modification of salvation. And it is the change that He makes in us. Is that how great is our God that He doesn't just deal with your eternal soul, but that He would change us also. Now, Brother David didn't know that. You didn't have any idea what I was preaching. If you did, you'd been sneaking or something or he's stalking, whatever. And uh, that, that previous song... The end of The Great I Am Still Is, where the men said, but I'm not what I used to be. And I got a blessing because that's the message, see. Well, then I just said, you know, Brother Matt, why don't you come testify? I said, Brother David, you can either sing some more of that song or you can sing another song. And he felt like the Lord led him to this song. And, and the song talks two or three times about where would I be had God not touched me. It's talking again about the change. If you could see where I once was, isn't that how it started? If you could see where I once was, you know, then you would see the work of God. And that's the message tonight. I'm just sitting there going, man, what a great God. That He knows what I'm going to preach and He's putting this service together. Now that might not mean anything to you, but if it doesn't, it's because you just don't see it. 
It's amazing. It's amazing that God knows. You say, oh, it could have been any song. No, there, there could have been any number of songs that didn't have anything to do with the message. But God said, watch this, watch this, watch this. And he started putting these pieces together. I'm getting such a blessing, not only from the truths of the song, that I don't know where I'd be if he hadn't saved me. I, I was sitting in front of Brother Kenny Ball when some of y'all remember the Kenny's a black preacher from there near D.C. that preached at Camp Meet this past year. And he's wound tight like I'm wound tight. He's a wild man. And uh, one song they were singing talked about how he got a hold of my life. And I just leaned back and I said, I am so glad he got a hold of my life. I said, what would I be? I said to him, I said, what would we be if he hadn't got, he said, listen, I know me. He said, I'd be a maniac. He said, if he hadn't got a hold of my life, and I feel the same way. I, I know how I'm geared and how my mind works, and, and I, I can't imagine where I might would be tonight had Jesus not got a hold of my life and changed it by his grace. You think about it while she's singing that second verse, and we'll help them sing on the chorus. We got nothing we can brag in in ourselves. Nothing. But we do have something inside worth telling about. Sing it. How could yeah. Of anything I've ever seen or done. Listen. How could I dare to claim as mine the victories God has won? Where would I be had God not brought me gently yeah, to this place? I'm here to say nothing. I'm My place. Now I live and breathe in freedom. Live and breathe in freedom. With each breath of life I take, I'm loved and forgiven. Yeah. Back with the living. Hallelujah. Or I'm just a sinner. Loved and forgiven I'm back with the living For I'm just a sinner Saved by grace Listen, all God's people say it. Shake hands with somebody while the choir's coming down. seated. You can turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I don't know who's singing for us, but let's go ahead and have them come on up and get ready to do that. Oh, these young ladies, here we go. How are y'all? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is where we're going to read in just a minute. I'm thankful that he changes lives, aren't you? We still uh, want to remind you of a couple of things. Don't forget the land offering envelopes if you don't know where those are right here on both sides of the pulpit. We made some pledges early in the year, try and be faithful to that. And then also, Brother Roy still needs a CDL driver. We need somebody that in a few months could take over a route and be a regular driver for one of our bus routes. And if you don't have your CDLs, but you'd be willing to take the test, we would, as a church, we would pay for that and help you to do that. And so uh, go see Brother Roy about that. Brother Roy, raise your hand up over there. Go see Brother Roy if you're interested. 
And uh, we have some lady drivers, by the way. It doesn't have to be a guy. Anybody that's willing to get that CDL, you can pass the test. That'll be a blessing. Also, Reformers Unanimous are having a special service this coming Friday night. Brother Justin is bringing in a guy uh, to give his testimony that was incarcerated for many years, got saved while in prison, and God's changed his whole life around, much like what we're rejoicing in tonight. He's going to share with how God set him free from some of the bondage that was in his life. And so if you know somebody that might could benefit from hearing such a testimony, uh, talk to Brother Justin over here on the front row at 7 o'clock Friday night. Is it 7 o'clock? Friday night up in the old building. They meet every Friday night up there, and the Reformers Unanimous, the addiction uh, ministry, trying to help people get set free. And so be praying about that all right and then I wanted to praise the Lord many of you were praying about our court date on Monday this past Monday and I sent out a hotline I think even a voice call but uh, it, it really went about as good as it could have gone for us on that day there's only one other thing they might could have done which is a little bit uh, of a far reach but we do praise the Lord for what we got that day we'll have to go back in three months uh, just kind of for where is everything going sort of deal. Uh, so we praise the Lord for that. We had favor. When we first got there and started talking to some people, uh, it didn't look good. But then just as the day progressed, the Lord started working some things out. And so I wanted to thank you for praying. And we praise the Lord for that. All right, Second Corinthians chapter 5. Listen to this good song. Uh, we're going to give him love offering for him personally. But if you want to help on that container thing, you can come see him after the service or even talk to this brother Kenny that's with him. Give him some money. Put a little money or a lot of money. You'll take either, won't you? A little or a lot. And help him with that container. How much does it cost for one container to be shipped? You know, $7, About $7,600 to ship one container. Yeah, boy. That's a lot. But it's got a lot of stuff on it. Yes, sir. And so uh, if you want to help on that and give, that would be a blessing. And be a blessing to them. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Very familiar verse. Most of you know this verse. And uh, I'm going to read it and then just uh, jump in to some simple thoughts tonight. To try to be an encouragement to you. 
And uh, Brother Mike Boone, I might have you give a testimony right near the end, all right? So be thinking about, uh, you know, how the Lord changed the direction of your life and what would have been maybe if you hadn't gotten saved, all right? Be thinking about that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man, aren't you glad it can be any man? I like that. That's that whosoever business right there. There, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I do thank you that we can open the Bible. I thank you that it's real and that it's relevant, uh, Lord, just as it's ever been. I praise you for that. I ask you now that you would help us in the next few minutes, Lord, to see something that would encourage our hearts about your greatness. Lord, I thank you for how you've already revealed yourself in this service. It blesses my heart to see you in control, and Lord, that we are uh, sometimes in tune with you, Lord, and that's not anything we can glory in, but it's all your goodness. I praise you for that. Help us now in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Now over the last several Sunday nights we've been looking at how great is our God and uh, we have gotten into uh, the greatness of God in salvation and we've rejoiced in seeing his greatness in the mercy of salvation, the general mercy that whosoever will can be saved as we said there that any man can be in Christ if he'll come to the Lord and we rejoice that God would love the world enough to make it possible that anybody can be saved. Then we rejoiced and saw the greatness in the personal mercy of salvation. Not only that he would save anybody but that he would save us that he would know me as he knows me and knew all I was going to do and still save me at that young age. And we see the greatness of God in the mercy of salvation. Then the greatness of God in the magnitude of salvation. That is, first of all, for all and that it is forever. Say amen right there. That our God is so wonderful that he didn't just fix it so that you'd have a chance. He fixed it so that if you ever received him, you could never mess it up. Now that's a good God. And he didn't owe us that. He didn't have to do it that way. And had he given us any any opportunity to be saved, it would have been mercy. Had he given us any chance to be born again, even if you would have had to have kept it, it would have been a good God. But a great God said, I'm going to fix it so they can't mess it up. We praise the Lord for his greatness in the magnitude of salvation. Then we saw the greatness of God in the means of salvation. That salvation being the most precious commodity in the universe, God made it as a free gift to us. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to work for it. We didn't have to endure anything painful to get to it, but that God said, I'll do all the hard work, I'll do all the heavy lifting, you just have to receive the free gift of salvation. And God did so because he loved us, but also in revealing his greatness. And by the way, it puts him head and shoulders all the, over all the other so-called gods who are making their people die for them, who are making their people suffer for them, who are making them work and work and work and still don't know for sure if they're going to go or not. Hey, listen, and I, I bumped into that Jehovah's Witness on the plane that day and she is a faithful servant who already knows that she's not one of the chosen ones. Now, how about that? How about that? Aren't you glad that our God said whosoever will just receive it as a free gift? By grace, through faith, plus nothing, minus nothing. Hey, a little child can be saved, bless his holy name. God shows his greatness in the means of salvation. Now tonight, I want to take another look at the great miracle that is biblical salvation. Let me try and show you the greatness of God in the modification of salvation. That salvation changes a person. You know, if God had simply saved us, think about this. If God had simply saved our souls and fixed our eternity, that alone would have been an invaluable gift. It would have been impossible to repay Him for eternity. See? And so if God in his kindness would have simply said, here's what I'm going to do. If you come to me and you ask and you ask to receive me, I'll save you and your eternity, eternity will be set forever in heaven. Wouldn't that have been unbelievable? And if he had only done that, you say, what do you mean? I mean, if he would have saved me at seven years old when I came to him and then simply said this, now, do the best you can between now and when you die. I'm not going to speak to you anymore. I'm not going to walk with you. I'm not going to. Now listen to me. That sounds harsh, but do you understand he would have still been good? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I would have still been getting a gift that I didn't deserve. I would have still been getting a, a, something you can never pay for. Eternity in heaven instead of an eternity in hell where I deserve to be based on my life and my sins and my actions. And so God would have still been merciful. He would have still been wonderful had he said, I'm willing to save you and then I'll see you in heaven when you get there. That would have been a good God. 
But our God's better than good. <laughs> He's better than that. He didn't say, I'm going to save you and then I'll see you. You do the best you can. No, he added some things to the package. Hey, it would have been the greatest gift ever offered, but our God is so magnificent. He is so great that along with my eternal package, I received an everyday package. Say amen right there. He didn't just say, I'm going to deal with you in eternity. He said, once you take that, I'm going to give you all kind of things in your everyday life. Hey, he said this, and explains in this verse, that when we are in Christ, God will begin to change us. He said, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. One of the greatest parts of this package that God gave us is that he said, I'm going to work on you right now. I'm not going to leave you like you are and let you make the mess of your life that you would make. Now that you have asked me to save you, now that you have asked me to bring you to heaven one of these days, I'm going to start walking with you every day. I'm going to start talking to you every day. I'm going to start working in your life and I'm going to begin to change you and transform you. And I'm going to say something to you. God didn't owe us that. Hey, if God would save us, we could never repay Him, much less that God would work in our lives and turn us into, by the grace of God, some of the things that we are tonight. Now, we're nothing in ourselves. Hey, but we're not what we could be. And that's all by the grace of God. It explains that He begins to change us. How great is God that salvation not only affects our eternity, but it also works on our humanity. Aren't you glad you're not the same person you used to be? Amen. Brother Filbert said that he got saved when he was 16. Yes, sir. And that before he got saved, he was Catholic. Yes, sir. And his testimony to me just a minute ago, he said, he said I would have probably been a Catholic priest. Yes, sir. Dead religion. He said, I would have been empty. Yes. He said, religious yes. and lost. Yes, sir. I mean, that's probably where he would have been. Except Jesus changed him. Amen. He's not like any Catholic priest I ever met. I'll just go ahead and tell you right there. I'm fairly sure in the Catholic church they're not saying how about that. All right? Amen. You say, what happened? Jesus saved him. And he didn't just save him. He began to work in him to get him off of that path. Now think about this. If God were to have done it the other way tonight. If God were to have done it the other way where he'll save you and then let you fend for yourself. Then Brother Philbert would have been a saved Catholic. Good night. He would have gotten saved and his eternity fine. How about that? I got him shook up now, praise God. And he would have been wasting his entire life in something that does not matter for eternity. Think about that. What would he have been tonight if God had said, I only save you and then you do the best you can? Hey, but everything changes because when you get saved, our great God doesn't just leave you for yourself, but he said, I have a way to change you in this life. And he begins to work. That's a great God that'll do that. It's a wonderful God. And he did it all through the Bible. In Luke 19, Zacchaeus was changed. Yeah. Zacchaeus was the chief of the publicans. Yeah. The publicans were uh, thieves, if you will. They cheated their brethren. They robbed from their own brethren, representing the Roman government. They would... Uh, tax the Jewish brethren. They would ask for more taxes than the Romans required and they would keep the difference. And their own brethren could not say anything to them because they had the Roman authority behind them and so they would just take advantage of their brethren. You know what? They were so dishonest that in their day they were not allowed to give testimony in court. Were not allowed because everybody knew the publicans were liars and they were cheats and they were thieves. And this wasn't just a publican. He was the chief of the publicans. He was the kingpin. He was the head man. He was a wicked man. He was very greedy. You understand that? And then Jesus came. Jesus came to his tree, praise God. And he took him to the house. And that day salvation came. And listen to what Zacchaeus said. After he got saved, he said, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if, now he wasn't 100% sanctified yet because he goes ahead and says if, right here. If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Now let me say something to you as I was looking at this a while ago. That repaying the people you've done wrong is a good step. Yeah. Yeah. But that first part shows the change. Yes, sir. See, his whole life has been greed to this point. His whole life has been, I don't care who I hurt, I don't care who I cheat, it doesn't matter who suffers from it as long as I get more, I get more, I get more. Now it's one thing to get right with the Lord and say, now I'm going to do right by the people I have cheated. But before he ever said that, he said, I'm going to give half of everything I have to the poor. Wow. And wow. then from my half, wow. think about that, from my remaining half, I'm going to repay everybody I've cheated fourfold. How about that? So the greedy becomes generous. Well, You know why? Because we have a great God. 
You know what he could have done? He could have let him get saved and go on and live a rotten life. But the Lord said, I won't do that. I'll change him. He begins to change him immediately. How about in Luke chapter 8, that demoniac was there. He was changed from dangerous and wild to a dynamic witness. Nobody could get around him. Nobody wanted anything to do with him. And then after Jesus uh, touched him and changed his life, he was sitting clothed in his right mind. And he says to the Lord, he said, I want to go with you. I want to go where you go. And the Lord said, no, no, no. You go back to your family and you tell them how wonderful things the Lord hath done for thee. The Bible tells us later that that city that he was from had a revival that many were saved, I believe, from the testimony of this man. You say, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. They saw a man whose not only his eternity was changed, hey, but his everyday life was changed. Can you imagine when he came walking into town how everybody probably went and hid how everybody probably took their children and rushed them into the doors and then all of a sudden they noticed wait a minute he's got on clothes he didn't used to have clothes on him hey wait a minute he's acting calm and he was never calm before hey wait a minute he's talking like he's got sense and he had no sense before I'm telling you that the Lord Jesus is such a good God that he didn't just save you and say I'll meet you in heaven but he says I'll work in your life and I'll turn you into something that'll be a blessing to this world he does that for His glory. He does it so people will see His greatness. Sir. The greatness of God and the modification of salvation that He would change us. In the book of Acts, Paul was changed from a murderer to a minister. He was changed, transformed from a cause of fear to a close friend. Hey, when they sent word and said, hey, this guy Paul, this Saul is coming back to Jerusalem to hook up with us apostles. They said, no, we ain't meeting with him. We don't trust him. We know him. He's the one that kills our kind. Yes. And Barnabas spoke up for him. He said, listen, listen I, I saw him over in Damascus and I believe he's changed. How about that, and all of a sudden he becomes a close friend. He becomes a, a, a commandant, if you will. Paul was conformed from a weapon of destruction to a wonderful disciple. Miss Scott, you go ahead and come and start playing How Great Thou Art if you don't care. In the book of Acts, Paul was changed. How great is our God? Aren't you glad he didn't just save us and leave us to fend for ourselves in this wicked world? But that with salvation, there was a package. A package of benefits. David said, you know, let us not forget all his benefits. It would have been, listen, because we know the truth, we can't really grasp how truly wonderful it would have been had he still done it the other way. You and I deserve to burn in hell. That's right. That's it's right. just true. That's right. I deserve to burn in hell for my sins. Miss Parker is a final lady as I know. And she deserves to burn in hell for her sins just like I do mine. And so for God to make any way possible for us to go to heaven is wonderful. And for him to make it as easy as he did that all we have to do is receive a free gift is magnificent greatness. And so had he just done that and said, I'll meet you there. You might live 10 years, you might live 50, you might live 100, and when your life is over, I'll meet you in heaven. Because we know the real truth, we can't grasp how wonderful that would have been. But you need to know that in itself, we could never have thanked him enough for that. We could never have repaid him for that. But once again, we see that he's exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That he's not just a good God, he's a great God. And he says, I'm not going to do that. Because even though you would miss out on hell, you could go through some things in this life. And I'm just going to help you with all that. I'm just going to start changing you. I'm going to work in your life. And he gave us this benefit package. One of them, probably the greatest benefit of it all, is that he doesn't leave us like he found us. Aren't you glad like Zacchaeus and the demoniac and Paul, the Lord has been working on us since we got saved? Aren't you glad that you're different than you used to be? What a great God. I tried to write a little poem this afternoon to try and articulate how wonderful it is that God doesn't just leave us like He found us. How great is our God that when I came to Him with my burdens pressing down, He heard my cry, saved my soul, and made me heaven bound. That all my many sins, both past and those still yet to come, He completely washed away by the precious blood of His Son. How great is He that from that day forward I never again have to fear about what will happen to me after this life when my final day draws near. 
I'm seated already in heavenly places according to his precious word. What a great gift came to me those many years ago, the moment my prayer was heard. Still all of his greatness has not in this act completely been made known. For eternal salvation came with a benefit package that daily has my mind blown. I was given assurance so that I don't have to worry and never again have to fear. My soul is eternally secure and I have his presence ever near. Beyond this is another benefit, the value of which I can never repay. God started a process in me. He continues working even up to this day. He's changed me inside and out and has conformed me into something more. I don't love what I used to, look like I used to. And oh, there's so much more. I messed up my rhyme there. I apologize. I'm a better husband, father, son, and friend than I ever have been than I ever before had been. He changed my heart and my mind and he's even helping me with my sin. For a long time, I didn't understand why all this had to be done. Then one day I read Romans, how he's making me more like his son. Now I know what example he's using in this divine transformation. I embrace the changing process, though painful it may be, in hopeful anticipation. That one day soon I'll become that image that he has somehow drawn in his mind. And although I still fall sadly short, I'm glad when I look behind that there's room, that though there's room to grow and my daily mistakes often still see, it is plain to me and plain to all that I'm not what I used to be. How amazing is God that he included this blessing along with our promise of heaven, that from the moment I prayed and asked to be saved way back when I was just seven, he began working on me and changing me and taking the old things away and filling my life with new things in Christ of which I'm learning each day. The final product is yet to be seen. For that, we all must wait. But when I think of this gift, two words come to mind, and those words are, how great. How great is God that he would not leave me as he did. Brother Michael, won't you come? He would have been a wonderful God if he'd given us salvation and that alone. But his greatness wouldn't allow it. I don't know all of Brother Mike's testimony, but I know he was on his way to boot camp when he got saved. Just testify. Think about where you might have been. I really, I went out with God, but it all started with mother taking me to church. Yeah. About 15, I got away from that. I got away from her. I never was. I wasn't saved then. And, but you know, the Word of God don't go void. It distills in you. You hear it. I got away from God and got pretty rough. I had some pretty rough relatives. And I got hooked up with some of them and went down the wrong path. But uh, it's the grace of God, the car wreck or two, and some of my relatives got shot. A little bit like Kentucky. But it's the grace of God in my life. Yes, sir. It is. And I remember many a night of coming in trying to slip through the house and a great old big family Bible or a 1611 sitting on the coffee table. I'd crawl through the bedroom window sometimes, but she got to where she locked it. And then sometimes I'd crawl through the basement window and I got locked too. But I ain't proud of none of this, but I'd that old Bible jump out at me and say, what about mama? What a disgrace you're bringing on the mosh. You listening, kids? Well, you can bring a disgrace. Yes. Boy, I'd cut my heart out, and as time passed, a few things happened. Probably shouldn't be alive one car wreck. Yes. God had mercy. Yes. He had mercy, but uh, times sometimes I drink, like I say, I ain't proud of it, but we might be 10, one place is about 13 miles back in the mountains. I, have, I might be barefooted sometime back in the woods trout fishing. Sometimes I couldn't hardly see where I was walking. And it's just, it's just prayer and the grace of God. That's all it is. Wonder how it got snake bit. But we didn't think nothing about that. We just got rough. But people just prayed. God's mercy and little by little, nothing made me happy. Nothing. Quit the drinking. I didn't want to date nobody, brother. I mean, nothing made me happy. And that just, that just kept getting worse and worse. And 
One day I just went a fishing way back in the mountains by myself in my right mind, and I'll never forget. I had the fly rod and I just laid it down on a rock way back in Mount Mitchell. And I, I just looked up and I said, God, if you're real. I've been to church, a good Bible believing church, and I wouldn't know one from the other, don't guess then. But I asked God to show me if He's real. If you don't want to know about the Lord, you better not ask Him out. So I need to turn my world upside down to that. For about two or three years, I couldn't get no peace, no sleep. I mean, I, I could see Him in nature. If I wanted to go fish and get away from everything and go hunting, He'd show me Himself and His creation. I didn't understand all of it. But little by little, I finally met a friend of mine who's in the same boat. He's a big old logger, a big brute. He said, let's just go. We, we just joined the guard. He said, let's just go. We just, we just want to go on an adventure. And <laughs> little did we know what we was going to meet. <laughs> we got in the Atlanta airport, and I just opened the bathroom door, and Danny ran in, about knocked him down at the door, and he gave me a gospel track. This was your life. And for about, probably it's about a month and a half, I'd read that thing every day. Yeah. In between being run and dog and no sleep, I'd pull it out and read it. Man, it cut my heart out. Yeah. And I, in the back of that track, showed a man sitting on a church pew. And a, that little thing come out of his head, and they wrote out there, he, he'd rather be home watching the ball game. I thought, that's me, but I don't care nothing about sports. I'd rather be in the woods fishing. And I'll never forget reading it for the last time, laying down there. I would go to sleep, and that night they were going to, uh, had some trouble in Lebanon, they blowed the embassy up, and they said, we're going to get y'all, you'll be ready to go in the morning, we're going we're gonna to go if they need us. And I'll never forget, I read that track, shut it, and some women from Turkey Cove Baptist Church would give us a Bible when we had graduated. I just stuck that thing in my duffel bag, it's like that big family Bible, I couldn't get away from it. I thought, well, I'll throw it in there, I didn't read it. And I'll never forget reading that track. I guess it's Holy Spirit, and I didn't really know what the Holy Spirit was. I picked that Bible up, and right before they turned the lights out that night, I read Psalms, I believe Psalms 53. None's good. No, not one. And God said, that's you. You're rotten to the core, son. And I thought, well, you know, man might get killed over there. And there's a little boy said, you're going to die before you get there. You don't get things right with God. And I, you know, I guess it, I had to be the Holy Spirit. But I never forget bowing my head right then. Yeah. Well, I said it again. If you're real, say it. Yeah. Boy, the world got lifted off my shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still, it was still a while before I got back and, and you know, got to church. But I never, even through all that, I still, I've done some things worse after I got saved than I did. Boy, I was miserable. But there's that still small voice that always say, I'm here and I love you. And all you got to do is call. Just call on me. And you ain't never been, it ain't never been the same since. It never will be. And, and you know the strange thing about all of it is, it all started the moment taking take me to church. And in the end, I got to take care of her. And you know, I, I know this is a little off track on all of it. And I appreciate the church praying. I just the most trying three and a half years I've went through in my life. And it was tough to deal with. Every day was just, I mean, every day was a battle. And I thought I had it figured out I was going to take care of her. And I figured out I couldn't handle it on my own, just like being saved. You know, you got to have God. And I thought, I can't do this, Lord. Why am I put in this position? My mom was a good woman, went to church all her life, served you when my dad was alcoholic, when I was a maniac. But God had changed me enough to see it through with prayers and grace to God. And, and I, I just couldn't figure out why he'd do that to somebody. And then that verse was coming to my mind for such a time as this. And it's like the Lord said, who knows? Maybe I just maybe you just got saved for one reason to take care of one of my children in the end. And you know what? It's all because God changed me. Yes! Ain't never been the same. You know what? I've even tried to get away from it sometimes. But there's a change inside that I can't get away from. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. And you know it's just God. That's all it is. It ain't me. And I learned how how mercy.
merciful he is in times taking care of my mother. I'd get aggravated and walk out the door and think, I can't stand this. I don't even want to talk to God. You know what he'd do? He'd just, the Holy Spirit would just come by and I'd have to praise him and cry. That's all I could do. That's all I could do. God's good to us, ain't so. I ought to be in hell today. I ought to be in hell. But you know what? March 15th, 1983, about five minutes to ten, Holy Ghost of God, He just come my way. It ain't never been the same, Miss Parker. It ain't never been the same. So. And I just thank you for having mercy on me, brother. Hey. Glory to God. How great is God Man. that He would change us. Brother Marvin, you got the words of that song? Put the first verse up there. You know, when we sing this song, we rejoice in the greatness of God. And first of all, that first verse shows us creation. When I, an awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars. That's that, that's that how great He is in creation. Give me that next verse, Brother Marvin. That next verse talks about how great is our God in salvation. When I think his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bear, and he bled and died to take away my sin. The song says, when I think about that, I just have to say, how great thou art. That third verse, we don't sing it as much. It talks about the greatness of God and its anticipation about him coming again. When Christ shall come with a shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow with humble adoration and then proclaim, my God, how great thou art. And when we think about him coming back and the fact that he would come and get us, we get filled with his greatness. Stand with me if you would. We're going to sing. Go back to that first one, Brother Marvin. And then I'm going to give you one at the very end. It shows his greatness in transformation. I want you to think tonight that God did not have to do it this way. That once again he was showing his greatness and that he wouldn't just save you and leave you, but that he would change you. And Brother Mike was the man he is right now, able to take care of his mom because God changed him. That young man that was just miserable wouldn't have probably done it. He was too much caring about himself. But this new man that God turned him into was what he needed to be when the time came. Let's sing that first verse. Let's skip the choruses and just sing the verses. All right, Miss Scott? Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all. Sing it now. Sing it, church. Second verse, and when I think of God is son not sparing. Yeah, think about that. Can take in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing. He let's do the course right here. Let's go ahead and sing that chorus. We'll end on this. Everybody sing now. Then sings my soul. 